And we welcome you back to Channel 6 News. Yesterday was the regular monthly meeting of United Laguna Hills Mutual, the uh, co-op portion of your community. And we're joined today by Mr. Ron Belder, president of United Mutual. Welcome back. Thank you. The um, situation with the board of United is an interesting one. Uh, you seem to now have uh, generated a lot of discussion on a number of issues, not just you personally, but the board and some right. of its decisions that they've made. And, you know, we like to think that, you know, everything locally happens here in Laguna Woods, but sometimes some of the things that you're getting involved in not only has statewide implications, and we know there's been some changes in state law this year, which has changed some of the ways you can run your meetings, federal law as well, and even international law has come to impact United Mutual. Um, you've come out strongly, the board's come out really taking a position on monies that people might want to use as collateral or ways to pay for a home here or to make the financial qualifications to live here. Some of that's in foreign bank accounts and that's presented some challenges and some problems to the board of United. Okay. Well, the first challenge we have is we have no way of getting the money from foreign banks if we have to go after it. Even the federal government can't go after foreign banks. They can only go after their U.S. office of that bank. Uh, I have pages, I showed it yesterday, five pages of banks around the world, even in the middle of the Congo, that has a branch here in Los Angeles. So people who have money in foreign banks can bring it and transfer it into the local branch of their bank that they have in their country. Also, Chase Bank, which is the world's largest bank, has operations in 150 countries. Bank of America is in 150, and Wells Fargo is in 130. So this only creates a problem to us because some countries are barred from sending money by federal or international law outside their country. And we had an issue on that. And if we had accepted the money, I would be telling you today that we'd have had about a $1.6 million penalty against United in criminal and civil violations of the Federal Acts. And that, of course, since our insurance will not pay for that, and it comes out of our contingency funds. And that means that everybody in United would have a $21 increase per month per manor just to pay that one sale off. I understand in this particular case, the uh, individual was able to make a transfer after a bit of uh, a dis discussion, shall we say, and uh, persuasion on the part of a few. And that money has been able to be transferred to a, a US bank. And so that sale can probably go right. forward. What happened is he took, gave us his listing of all assets in Iran, never told anything about what was in the United States. After it was turned down, a couple days later, suddenly in local Bank of America, all this money appears. He had accounts here, but a lot of people don't want people to know what they have. Uh huh. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Well, I know it's been interesting. Uh, every year when the election time comes around, uh, staff has to mail out the ballots to the owners of the homes. Right. And we've had, in the last couple of years, they've had to be a little bit earlier with that because some of the mm -hmm. folks that actually own homes here also have their legal address in another country. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have to mail it to mm -hmm. Japan or China or somewhere else uh, in the world, somewhere in Europe, mm -hmm. to get that to their actual home address, mm -hmm. people who also own a home here in the village. So uh, we're becoming international, which is great, mm -hmm. and it makes for a great variety and of people and great experiences, mm -hmm. but it also presents a few financial and legal mm -hmm. challenges to the board. Well, speaking of challenges, it seems like uh, every month that the uh, residents <laughs> Uh, member comment time, there seems to be a, a bigger and bigger turnout each month. Uh, some of the issues seem to come up every month. The six-month leasing mm -hmm. issue continues to be an issue. But something came up yesterday which I thought was interesting. Uh, since the beginning of the year, the board has had their attorney, mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Gottlieb, join you each mm -hmm. month for the meeting. And a resident was asking about that and uh, why that was necessary on the part of the board. Well, I can tell you this, that the Protect Property Values people and some of the other groups don't want an attorney there. The laws have changed and become so complicated that we have to watch every word we say. For example, Rob Merritt's walking down the street, he trips over his own shoe. I run up to him and I say, Rob, how did you get hurt? What happened? Are you okay? As an individual, I could do that. As a director, I got to turn and walk away because the minute I come up to help you and I ask those questions, I have now committed the board 
once an officer makes certain statements, we commit. We need our legal attorney. And by the way, every public and private business corporation has an attorney at the board. Every city, county, state, and federal has an attorney there. Or, they or more than one. Yeah, and they keep us online because if we make a mistake, she'll give a signal and or she'll turn around and actually say something. Or when somebody comes up and says, you could do this, she's got to tell the public you cannot do it. So she serves an important function, oh, especially yes. with those changes in state law. Well, you were looking at the guidelines for financial qualifications mm -hmm. yesterday, and this is one of those items that gets debated and then gets put on a 30-day mm -hmm. notice. Uh, that seemed to get pretty clear sailing with your folks yesterday? Well, there was a time for the 30-day notice was up. Okay. So we have to look at it one more time. The board looks at it. We ask again for, uh, questions from the audience, comments, and then the board votes a final vote, either yes or no, or we change it. The other one was also a 30-day notice taking place was the uh, uh, dual ownership. And uh, maybe give a little history on that. Is that something that was allowed once and not allowed any longer? What's the story on the dual ownership? Okay. What that came about was we discovered a care facility where one part of a family owned this unit and then right behind them was a second unit that they also owned by a different member of the family and they took the wall out. Uh, so they made one big unit for handling all of the people in there. That is an illegal act. There are two of those within Laguna Woods. They're actually running a business. They're actually running a business. This is a full, and it was also discovered because trucks were coming in there and delivering pallets of food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I understand that the rules have changed now and that people, even if they do have the money to buy two adjoining mm -hmm. units, are no longer allowed to remove that wall. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, and so you're not allowing people to own two units next to each other anymore? No, you can own two units, but you cannot take that wall out. Mm -hmm. uh, we have certain rules with the city, certain rules within the uh, mutual. Now, if you have a family A and it's somebody not related wants to take a wall out, then they come and they can ask for a variance, but then we have to take a look at it. In this case, they made some very big modifications, including an atrium that was in between the mm -hmm. two buildings. Is though, are those people going to be allowed to stay here, or is the board going to yes. take action to remove them? No, we're not going to move them. They're closing that up. The city has told them that they have to put in a firewall. Okay. Another issue that uh, is on discussion with the board, and a lot of people like to have the decorative stone mm -hmm. uh, on walls and different areas mm -hmm. around the area. You made a policy change. You're looking at changing the, the style and type of block. This is that mortarless uh, construction that we see so much of these days. Yes, we're doing a complete upgrade of our uh, landscaping. In the past, when we did the painting, they took some plants away. They came back and did just a few. Now what we're looking at is when we do a whole cul-de-sac, we remodel the cul-de-sac. We make all the changes at one time in that cul-de-sac so it is complete when we walk away from it. So that's why we're gonna be using this type of border. That's why we're putting a lot more money into reserves to do upgrades and renewal of all of the landscape. Mm -hmm. Are you also talking with Third Mutual to have a consistency of of styles and colors with Third, or is this strictly for United? This is strictly United. What we're working with Third right now is on pavers. Third has asked us to go with them on putting pavers across intersections, and by buying larger quantities, we get lower uh, pricing. What we have decided to do, normally we hire a consultant, pay him a lot of money to come in and say, all right, these are the colors you should paint your buildings, and we have five or six colors. What we have right now is a subgroup run by Director Bryans, who is looking at a whole cul-de-sac with 8, 10, 12 different colors within that cul-de-sac. And then we're going to move those colors out within the community to update our look. You know, changing a paint can also upgrade the quality and the style of the building. Right. And obviously keeping uh, those homes sold and keeping them uh, occupied is right. in the interest of the mutual as well. We see from time to time signage around the community. Mm -hmm. and, and I know one of the issues has been uh, for sale signs and the policies on that. Right. We're in the political season now, so we may start seeing some political mm -hmm. signage out there as, as people, mm -hmm. and certain rules, they can do that. But you are looking at a policy on non-commercial signage here in the community. We have to have that. Now, for real estate signs, it normally goes in United into your uh, one of the windows. 
And what we've allowed them to do, because a third doesn't have all windows on everything facing the street, they've allowed them to come right outside the wall of the unit and put it into the grass area. We've allowed that to, uh, for our real estate agents. But we then have people who want to put up all kinds of signs. There are people who have church services want to put signs up on their church. People who have clubs want to put up their club signs on their lawns in the common area. Then we have the politicians, and if you see up and down the streets, you know, you see them all over Laguna Hills, but you didn't see them in the city of Laguna Woods out there because cities have certain rules. Mm -hmm. So we want to try and keep it clean because otherwise you're going to be, and I moved from LA, and you could walk down the street and see 30 signs on the street. And I was an election official. I ran the precincts of three cities, and wherever you had a precinct, you would see block after block of dozens of signs, and of course, yeah, certain yeah. rules come in. Right, exactly. Well, I know where I live, uh, they don't have that rule. And as you drive out of Laguna Woods, you start seeing still leftover signs from our primary from uh, the other day. So. Uh, Sometimes those politicians don't take those signs down as quickly as we'd like them to, so it's good that you have some control. Or they climb up on poles on private oh, property yeah. and, and put them, them higher up. and higher and higher. And sometimes you'll see competing candidates stacked yeah. above each other. It gets pretty carried away at times. One of the realities uh, when this community was built back in the 60s, the material that was used in lots of construction to help eliminate the danger of fire was asbestos. You're looking into uh, that subject, and obviously we now know that asbestos causes some health issues. Mm -hmm. uh, you're forming a uh, asbestos-containing material policy now in United. Right. When you come in here to either purchase a condo, a co-op, or renting and leasing, you sign documents which tell you that there is asbestos in these units. What we worry about is if somebody decides to take the ceiling, the cottage cheese, for example, on the ceilings that was put in before 1978, has asbestos. If they're going to scrape that and let all this dust go around, that creates a problem. And you, we have to be able to contain that because we don't want people to have breathing problems and everything else. So the contractors have certain rules that they have to follow. And it's not just our rule, it's a state and federal law. When we had the earthquake in the San Fernando Valley, I had people in white suits with tanks for three weeks in my home pulling out all the asbestos around the uh, ducts, on the ceilings, everything. And they had to put it in trucks, bag it, and I had to go to an Indian reservation for hazmat material in Arizona. And I had to keep a certificate for 15 years saying that everything was followed. That cost the insurance company a lot of money. I remember when the uh, old administration building was sold mm -hmm. and they tore that down, they had to bring in, as I call them, the ET suits, right. uh, people with the breathing equipment and special protective clothing because there was a lot mm -hmm. of asbestos in that building, including, unfortunately, what used to be our TV studio there. So we'll, we're well, of that, well aware of all that. We're about out of time. Any final comments you'd like to make? Yes, today, uh, or actually tomorrow morning, we're going to be talking about version one of our budget. We've gotten the preliminary information from those three meetings that we had of the uh, budget so far, and this is our first version. Now, when people see that, they're going to say, oh my God, there's a $12 increase in United, and there's uh, uh, an additional increase from GRF of eleven fifty nine. It's going to be $23.97. We start cutting that, but some things we can't cut. El Toro Water District Rate increase goes in at the end of this month, and we have to take money out of our reserves to pay for people's water until the end of the year. And that's going to be about 10% uh, increase in just the water rates yeah. this year. Yeah. So we would urge you folks to attend that meeting if you live in United. That will be tomorrow morning, Thursday, 9.30 tomorrow morning, and that will be in the boardroom on the first floor of this building. Staff will make a presentation of the preliminary 2013 mm -hmm. business plan and budget. This is meeting A. If you need more time, there'll be a meeting B in a few right. days, but normally you can get it done in one meeting. But this is the beginning of the process, and then with the input that mm -hmm. comes tomorrow from the board and from the residents, staff will start making those trims and those cuts for version 2. Same thing happens for version 3. By version 3, it's pretty much settled what's going to happen in 2013. All right. In fact, today, the GRF board is holding a meeting on their version A, as right. it's called, or version 1, depending right. on how you look at it. And you folks in United and 3rd, uh, we urge you to attend those meetings as well as the Golden Rain one. Uh, stay up with what's happening with all of those things. 3rd Mutual, by the way, will have their meeting on Friday of this week 
1.30 in the afternoon. So if you live in third, you can catch that meeting as well. And we will see you back here uh, next month with more right. of what's going on in United. Reminder, folks, if you missed that meeting yesterday, you can see a replay tomorrow, Thursday, starting at 1.30 here on Channel 6. And if you're busy tomorrow, next Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock will be the final replay of this June meeting of United Mutual. Thanks for joining us. I thank you for see having us. See you in a few us. weeks. Thanks for coming by yeah. today. Ron Beldner, president of uh, United Laguna Hills Mutual. Again, you can see that replay tomorrow and uh, keep up with what's happening there in United Mutual. We'll be right back with more as our program continues here for you on Channel 6.